I don't think that's going to work. Oh, I can put it over here. I got some hay today. We got you some hay today, mister. Yes, we did. Put this down here for a second. Ugh. Move your carrier. Ugh. There we go. All right. <laughs> I know. I know. Oof. Hi. Hi, little buddy. No, Cocoa Bean, you don't get to eat my rabbit. Not today. <laughs> you don't get to eat Vinny today. No, you don't. And you don't get to drink my beer, neither. <laughs> I got hay today. I finally went and got Vinny some hay. So I found out I was using the wrong bedding for his, um, watch out. Oh, uh, the wrong bedding. He has a little, here, I'll show you. I have a carrier that when it storms or if he has to travel, little Vinny has this. He's got a little cat, pet carrier. <laughs> the only problem is I'm using the wrong bedding. You're not supposed to use cedar. And all they had at the place, this last place I went to was this cedar bedding. Well, I found out it's not good for them. So I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to get rid of that. And I bought some, a bale of hay, hence the scissors. I need to cut the bale up. And I'm going to get little Vinny's um, cage kind of made up so that he has a little bedding area. I'm going to use some of that hay for bedding and also he can eat it since it's not straw. That is what I'm planning to do. And then I'm going to make rice Um, I don't know if you guys have ever tried this. There's a rice aroni recipe. Um, and I, I left it at home. I left the actual recipe at home, but <laughs> look at this. Oh my God, Coco. <laughs> She's getting in there. She had her whole body in there. What are you doing? What are you doing? Huh? You want to get in there and sniff what the bunny smells like, don't you? Mm-hmm. Coco does not like Vinny. Yeah, that's the poopies. Yep, that's the poopies. <laughs> you going to eat the poopies? Stay away from Vinny, though. You're not allowed near Vinny. That you know. <laughs> Poor little Benny doesn't even know to be scared. <laughs> I'm going to move his cage. Anyway, there's this recipe. And you take chicken and you bake it in the oven like in a... Um, I use a glass um, container. But you, you put your chicken in there. You put your tin foil over it. Cook it for a little bit. And then um, you take the chicken out. And you put um, a packet of rice aroni, the chicken rice aroni, and you put the rice down in the bottom. And then you mix <laughs> beer and chicken. No, you mix cream of chicken soup and I think some water and the packet seasoning from the, the uh, rice aroni. And you mix that all up and then you pour it over top of, of the uh, rice that you put down in there. And then you put your chicken back on and you bake it. You cover it with tinfoil and you bake it for like an hour. Oh my God, the rice, uh, so good. Oh, so I'm going to try that today. I don't remember my amounts. That's the only thing I don't remember is the amount of like water and stuff, but I'm going to get it figured out, figured out after I get Vinny. Also, ah, oh, he's eating his, he's eating his <laughs> grass. Everybody was very concerned about Vinny. Poor little Vinny because of, um, the holiday, it being Easter, they were very concerned that I had hurt poor little Vinny. Poor little Vinny. They think I ate you. Yes. They say I ate you, you cute little thing. Why would I eat my cute little bunny, huh? He loves to get petted. I'm going to eat your grass. He is a good bunny. I don't know why anybody would want to hurt poor little Benny. He's so sweet. He's just a sweetheart. I put some rose, um, 
sticks from the rose bush over here for him. A couple so he has something to chew on, something to mess around with, huh, buddy? Yeah. yeah. And we do. We collect his little poo-poos. <laughs> I collect them and I put them in with the, um, like the flower plants and stuff. I'll put it over here. We got a rose bush. I've been putting it in with... See, this is where I get his sticks. Just take off some sticks off the rose bush. I take the prickers off of them. It's very good fertilizer. Rabbit poop is very good fertilizer. See, you just do that and then I break it off. And now he's got another stick. We got another Vinny stick. Hi, Rim Rose. Hi, hi, James. No, Coco, it's not for you. It's not for you. It's for Vinny. Uh, uh, uh. Get away from my my bunny. No, no, you don't get to eat my bunny. No, go on, go on, go on. You're not allowed to be by the bunny. She knows better. Go on. Stay there. You're not allowed to eat my bunny. I love my little bunny. <laughs> look at me. See, Vinny, look at He's nice. He's like, huh, what? Was I in danger? <laughs> Spike used to want to eat, eat Vinny, too. Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, they make... Okay, so bunny poop makes very, very good fertilizer because it doesn't... Um, make your plants hot. You can put it on like, uh, you can put it right on the plant. It won't hurt your plants. Hey buddy, here. Oh, you turned in the wrong way to, looky, I got something for you. Something you can mess around with. Got you a yummy old roast stick. See, I got you a roast stick. Look at, it. it's gonna, I'll tell you what, I'll hang it. I'll hang it up here, and then you can have to pull it down. See, he's already, he can't stand that it's there. See, look at, he's like, I got to move that thing around, Lori. Mm. I know I want to go fishing. I didn't get any fish. I drove by the lake today. I drove by the lake. I, I told, I told uh, Echo, I'm like, I think today's a good day for fishing because there's no, it, like the lake is real calm and the fish didn't eat yesterday. So they got to be hungry today, <laughs> right? Oh, are you going to eat that? See, he likes this. Look at it. He's like, oh, something to chew on. Something that's up there that where it shouldn't be. I got, I'm a, he's a busy little bunny. You're a very busy little bunny, aren't you? Look at you. You're damn cute, too. Oh, he loves having that rose. Uh, I don't have to do anything because they can actually eat roses. Like, they can eat the roses. They can eat the branches, the leaves. It is a bunny safe. But just so you know, whoops, I almost fell down. For anybody who has a bunny... Bunnies and beer. Um, don't use cedar shavings. So I guess I wasn't supposed to use cedar. <clears throat> yeah, I know. You want to eat my bunny, don't you? <laughs> but I did not know that I was not supposed to use cedar. So I, I'm going to have to get rid of that. But I went and bought a hay bale. I'll show you. I got a bale of hay. Which he could eat his hay then. Oh, that's closed. Okay, so I think I'm going to dump this shit out first. Uh, pineapple and cherry dump cake in my crock pot. Ooh, pineapple and cherry. That sounds good. Put this down. Well, now where did I put my... Oh, there it is. Say, where did I put my cigarette? I had to pick up dog poop, yes, the other day, <laughs> and I put it in a little pile. It stunk so bad. Oh, my God. So I just put it in this bag today, so maybe putting this 
stuff on top of it will make it so it won't stink so bad in there. Will you kind of help me? All right, let me put this down. Oh, bunnies are make really, actually make really nice pets, so. All right. Okay, Miss Coco Bean. Yeah, we gotta dump it. <laughs> I hit that. Okay. All right. I wonder, can you, I wonder if you can use cedar shavings for, um, for your plants. See, look, I've got cucumber plants. I wonder if I could put cedar shavings around or if it would hurt the plants. Because we got watermelon. Here's my watermelon. If you want to, <laughs> There's my watermelon. I've actually pushed it down, pushed down the ground so it wasn't a hump anymore. Because look at Echo's watermelon plant is doing much better than mine. <laughs> Somehow he is doing much. Oops, I'll pick that little weed out of there. There's a weed. But uh, yeah, that's mine. And that says, yeah, I'm going to have to check about the cedar. Oh, that's not Spike. That's actually cocoa bean. Spike's inside taking a nap. We moved the pepper plant, one of the pepper plants down here. And so we could put, see, we got this right here. So we could put the cucumber plants there. So hopefully they will grow all over. Look at that. That's going to be nice up in the, in the well. Uh, that's going to be nice. Can have cucumbers hopefully all over. Yeah, that's cocoa bean. They're the same damn color, aren't they? Yes, I know. But, uh, man, that dog poop stinks. Ugh. Okay, I'm gonna put this. You know what? I'll take this in with me so I don't have to carry it out. I wanted to. He poops here, and it's easy for me to just kind of like this, you know, to get it over here. But I'm noticing he's pooping in that back corner, too, so. I might actually try to clean this up a little bit here. Put my beer down. I got this here to kind of, like, guard him against wind and anything but this has his food in it uh, well mr vinnie i might lift you up a little bit and get some of that poopy out of there but i wanted to build him there you go buddy there 
I wanted to build him like a little nest over here with that hay there. But I notice he's pooping in that back corner and I don't want it to get high. I might have to mess around with this. I might have to mess around with this cage. Okay, go get him some hay. You'll have to see, cause I got a whole bunch of that cedar, cedar shavings and I don't know if you can use it or not for um, around the plant bases of the vegetables. No, you don't get to come out. There's no bunny in there, I promise. There's no bunny in there. All right. Ooh. Okay. I think I'm going to get some hay. Get some hay. It's dark in here. Shh. See, I got some. I got a bale of hay. is okay for vegetables I know it's not okay for rabbits now so Ugh. see I'm just gonna make him a nice little nesty stuff in there this is actually he can eat it but he also can use this for bedding so this thing was like for the ground this thing was like seven. I went uh, to um, uh, TSC, but it was like I'm trying to think how expensive it was. It was like fifteen dollars for a bale of hay, um, like this size, you know, like a two thing hail of bay. Bale of hay? Did I say hail of bay? <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, I think I got enough in there. Okay. I'll grab some for him to eat. Grab a little. Um, it's a chew. It's got chew, see? All right. It's got chew uh, things. And I think I got, I think I got plenty in there so that he can hop around in there. I just put him in there when, um, when there is uh, really bad weather or something, I'll put him in there because I don't want him. Um, rabbits, you have to protect rabbits from wind and you have to protect rabbits from um, being wet. So they can get really cold. There's a lot of crazy rabbit people out there who think that, oh, it's a pet and it can't ever get cold and this and that. No, rabbits like the cold. Um, they actually like the cold. They do much better when it's cool out. Uh, they can withstand way down. Get away from my rabbit. <laughs> go on. Go on. Go, go, go. They can actually withstand really cold, cold temperatures as long as they don't have wind on them and they're not wet. Um, it's the heat that really does in a rabbit. It is in their nature, but uh, it's the heat that gets them. Okay, so I'll show you. See, she's very interested in this because she knows that a rabbit lives in here. Okay. I think that's more than enough. Uh, Coco, get back. Oh, you little stink butt. I know, you're cute. I also know you want to eat my rabbit. <laughs> I know you want to eat him too, don't you? Check it out. And sniff and sniff. There's no bunny in there. There is no bunny in there. Yep. You see, she's like, mm hmm, but I know where the bunny is, Lori. <laughs> you can't eat my bunny. No, ma'am. Spike used to want to eat him, too. I had to, uh, I had to, I'm trying to get this. It seems like it's zoomed in. Um, I had to train Spike 
to not eat Vinny. And it took a while because Spike, uh, he is one, he's, he's like her. He's got a high prey drive, you know. And so little animals, boy, a cat, he hates cats, um, anything like that. He will go after them, you know. He would, he would eat them. <laughs> and um, so it was kind of hard to get him to let Vinny hop around and not attack him. But he would sit there and lick his lips and everything. Oh, he wanted that bunny so bad. Um, but then I, um, I had been butchering, right? So he was used to seeing animals um, around that were alive or not alive anymore, but they still smelled like, you know, the animal. And he, had, he wasn't allowed to get near them. And so I kind of trained, had already trained him to listen to me you know, you got to, when we're around animals like this, you got to listen to me. So, um, with Vinny, I kind of played off that and I trained him. Um, and then after a while he got to stop seeing him so, as prey and he started seeing him as a fun little toy. Um, they would play like chase and stuff like that. But, um, it took a lot of time before I was able to know that I could like walk in the kitchen real quick and get a drink or something. And my rabbit wasn't going to disappear. <laughs> Okay, so there's plenty in here. I'm gonna grab some and give him some. Minnie, I'm going to give you some. I gotta tell her to get out of there though first. Go on. Yeah, I'm talking to you. No, you don't get my bunny. No, go, go on. No. No. <laughs> it hit you in the face, didn't it? Leave my bunny alone. Okay, I see you, Vinny. I see you, little man. You stay in there. I don't want her to eat you. Here, here's some more hay. Watch out. There's some more hay for you. Yeah, he made himself a little bed over there, but that'll give him some more to... I'll just keep throwing it from over here, I guess. But yeah. When it's nice out, I put it up so he can see out in the field and everything. I know. You're a good boy. Give me kisses. Thank you. He likes to get pet. Don't you, buddy? Yes. Say, I like my Lori. I like my Lori. Yes. Yes. He's a good little boy. Aren't you? Are you a good little boy? <laughs> yes, you are. I see ya. You like your stick? <laughs> oh, hi, handsome. Oh, kisses. Thank you. Here, let me pet you. I know you like to get petted. Yes, little Vinny. Oh, he likes to get petted. Say, Lori, I just love you. <laughs> I think he loves, I think he does. I was telling Echo, I think he actually loves me. Like he, he likes to get pet and shit. No. He likes to get pet though. He likes to get petted right between his little ears. He likes to just sit here and get pet like this. And he loves his little cheeks rubbed. Oh, Lori he knows what makes you happy. Oh, Benny. I should have called him Gilligan because he's my little buddy. <laughs> I always say, you're my little buddy. He's my little buddy. Mm -hmm. Hi, Nurse D. He's my, got my little buddy here. <laughs> no, he's, he loves his little head rubbed. All right, let's close you back up and keep you safe, mister. I'll come out later and get that. Oh, I got to get this thing. Ugh. There we go. Get that up there. But that's little Vinny's setup for right now. Oh, look at He's so damn cute. Look at him. There's just nothing cuter than a fucking bunny. If you've never been kissed by a bunny, like he loves to give kisses. If you haven't been kissed by a bunny, been licked on the hand by a bunny, you're missing something. <laughs> this is where I go for my zen. 
Yes. Oh, tricky, uh, tricky, tricksy. I meant to text you. I'm sorry. And then I got to trying to find hay today. <laughs> I got I got all into this hay stuff because poor little Vinny. Oops, I got to put this back down. But poor little Vinny, his. Uh, I was afraid it was going to rain or something. And poor little Vinny wouldn't have anywhere to go. Oh, he does. That's what I was saying. I think he actually loves me. Um, or at least likes me a lot. Because uh, I used to have a room. I let him out and he goes running around in those little... Uh, in the little flower beds and he digs oh he's so cute he digs and stuff but he really likes his lorry time and when we would be in my house i had a little room a sunroom and i'd let him go running around and he uh he would he would want to be with me now yeah he would hop around and check shit out but he liked to be by me i was his safe spot i think and so he would come and he would jump on my lap he'd jump up on my shoulder and kiss my cheeks <laughs> Yes, he knows my smell. We had, I had a, a homeless guy that was my friend and um, he ended up sleeping in that room, my son room during the winter. Um, and we had like little heaters out there and stuff. And the bunny knew his smell too. He knew the difference um, because like, and he would know the difference in when people came home if they belong there or not. So new people, he was not so trusting. He would not just go up and kiss anybody. But that's why I kept him, is because he was unusual. He, he became a pet because he seemed to really like me from the very beginning. He kept coming over. I was, he was in the butcher pen, remember, with his brothers and sisters. And this one little bunny kept coming up and trying to kiss me and stuff and lick me. And he was just being real sweet. And so I ended up keeping him. Well, now he's a pet, beloved pet. So um, it pays to be nice sometimes. <laughs> but um, yeah, he's a sweetheart. Mm -hmm. So he's become, a, he's become a pet. He knew how to save himself. Yes. <laughs> I'll tell you what, if you ever find yourself on the chopping block, start kissing ass quick. <laughs> Kiss ass, be sweet, be a nice person. If you're on the cho chopping block, it might just save your life. You never know. Perfect example. Little Vin Vin. <laughs> Poor little Vinny. Okay, so I'm going to try to make this rice a -roni stuff. And I'm not sure how much water to put in there, but I'll show you what, I, what I'm going to do. <laughs> I mean, I got a whole bunch. Like, well, I say a whole bunch. I got 12. So that's a whole bunch for me because I don't drink much. For some reason, I got stuck on this yingling. <laughs> I don't know why. Okay. All right. Let me turn the light on. So I'm going to... I'll show you what I'm going to do. I got stuff for a salad, too. I got a case of... You do too? I put it in the fridge. <laughs> but um, let me put this away. Over here. Okay, so I got rice -roni, um, chicken. Very important to get the right kind. Okay. And I just take out the seasoning packet. Normally it says to cook your chicken. Uh, I remember the recipe saying to like cook the chicken for like an hour or something and then cook it again or cook it for half an hour and then an hour. But it's chicken breasts. Whole chicken breasts are not, um, they don't take long to cook. So I'm not, I just put them in. I figured the hour is good enough. I got hair dye too because look at, I'm getting, look at how white my hair is. Look at how white my hair is, you guys. Like, look at my roots. I have, have this white, look at right here. Look how white it is. I have like a white spot coming in on my sides. When my hair that's growing, okay. Like if you actually see it, it's like, look at how white it is like coming in. Whoops, I got white right here. And I got on the same thing on this side. On this side, 
it's like I got this white streak right in here. And then the rest of it is like just dark and stuff. But it's, I am getting old, I know. But I got some hair dye, but I almost wish I could just put out those two silver streaks, you know. I don't really mind it that much, actually. The gray hair. Yeah, see, it is getting, I'm getting old. Look at this. That's funny. Oh, I got to get my, I got to get my, um. My cords, because my phone's gonna die. Go get that. Okay. I bought some hair dye. I like this stuff. Sometimes I go metallic. I go different reds all the time. <laughs> right now, I need my haircut. Look at it. It's like, phew. It's crazy. It's growing long. My hair is finally getting longer. I need to get a hair trim. But anyway, I digress. I want to cook food first. Hungry. We went yesterday to try to get rice aroni and the, the um, grocery stores were closed. And so we couldn't get the rice aroni. We couldn't get the rice roni and we went to the dollar store and all they had was like a cheese thing. I'm not big into like the cheese. I really like this. For this recipe, I really like this. So, let's see. Maybe I should put it this way. Do, do, do. Put it that way. <laughs> there we go. So I can see you and still do my stuff. Okay. Big chicken breast. <laughs> I got me some big breasts. Woo! <laughs> okay, let's see. Cream of chicken. I got my cream of chicken soup. Gotta put my oven on 350. Oh, what did you hunt? Red beans, ooh, deer sausage. Oh, and pig meat, ooh, that sounds good. That sounds really good. Yes, I'm working some. Okay. I gotta turn the oven on. I think it goes on 350. <laughs> you gonna try to not get in there? Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, I'll put it right there. Now, as long as you don't get on the fridge, you're okay. That's where you're going. Okay. All right. There you go. <laughs> I got to start the oven. Let's see. Okay. Let's see if I can actually get it to go right. Oops. Okay. Camera shy. Okay. I always fuck up this oven, too. I'm always, like, thinking that I turn it on and it's not on and shit like that okay I need to find something to cook this in actually now that I think about it where the heck I think down here yes okay oh my god this is good stuff I don't have anything for you, buddy. Mm -hmm. He likes to come out here. He knows there's food. Did I? I don't think so. I haven't heard anything about the house being sold yet next Alex. I'm sure when it sells, I'll hear something about it. But I haven't, I haven't heard anything about my house selling yet. So I'm going to guess it hasn't. 
<laughs> is he flashing us? No, <laughs> he's trying to stay off camera. Um, okay, so I do need to wash this though. Cause see, I got like a, I like these pans, the glass ones. Um, just wanna wash, make sure it's all rinsed out and everything, but. Uh, I like to put my rice aroni stuff in this, something big like this. Sitting in there a while. Just get it nice and clean. Dust and stuff off of it. I need to wash my hands too. <laughs> Which was good to wash this, so I washed my hands after I was out gardening and shit and doing all that stuff with Vinny. call this rice aroni. I don't know what to call it. I tried to look it up online, but I couldn't find where it said like an actual recipe, like what I had. Um, and there are different things you can put in there. You can put, um, I like French fried onions on top of casseroles or on top of anything. So I'm sure that would be really good. But, um, did I get both packets out? Okay. So what I am going to do is I'll show you what I do. Let me put it down a little bit it okay all right so what i do is do this oh, see? and i'm gonna do two although i don't know it's gonna be pretty full i'm not sure how much water to put in here let's see what it says in here uh water water, water. it says two and a half cup water. And I'm gonna add cream of chicken soup. So let's see, I gotta find something to mix the cream of chicken soup into. I gotta find something here. Oh no, I think I have a bowl over here. Oh, you know what, I'll just do this. Put a little beer in it. <laughs> I'd rather drink my beer than cook with it. But yeah, I just get a spoon. I think I use one of these. And then what I do is I'm not sure how much water though to actually fucking use. Oh, wait, I have, um, oh, I need a regular spoon with this shit. I don't know if I should use, I think I can use. I think you use one can. Oh, okay, the sweet and sour sauce, Nurse D, real easy. I'm gonna tell you real quick here. I'm gonna just give it to you real quick, okay? This is how easy it is. You take a can of crushed pineapples and you put it in a saucepan with um, some ketchup and some um, brown sugar. I think I would start with like a quarter cup of brown sugar or something like that. I just take some, squish it up and put it in there until it tastes right, right? But you put like about a fourth a cup, something like that, um, a couple tablespoons. Start You start it out however you want, but you put brown sugar in there and you put, um, squirt some ketchup again, about the same amount and just mix it up and um, you get it nice and warm. And um, then you uh, get some cornstarch and, and put water, put it together with some water and pour a little bit of that in there and it'll thicken it up. So that's, that's it. 
So it's really, really easy. And you can't really do it too wrong. I know now why the ladies used to always say to taste and stuff like that. It's hard to give a recipe when you're not really um, measuring so well. I'm one of those when I did home ec, um, me and a girl, we, we got paired up. We made the best food. Oh, my God. We made the best food. And she was one of those that, like, everything had to be perfectly leveled off. Everything had to be just right with the instructions. And I was the type that said, eh, that's close enough. Throw it in there. And between the two of us working together, we made the best food in home ec. Now, isn't that something? <laughs> isn't that something? Just say it again. Isn't that something? Let me see if I got... Working together with people. Hmm. Working together with people. I might just add up. No, these take forever to dry out or to throw out. Let me see. I think I got a chicken broth. Yes, I did. Use a can of chicken broth then. I think. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna use a can of chicken broth. Okay. Only I don't know how to. I don't have a regular can opener. I'm not sure how to use this can opener. <laughs> you can, this is an electronic can opener. I'm not sure how to use it. Let's see if I can get it or not. Oh. Let's see if I can do it right. Okay. It's plugged in. Oh, maybe. Oh, okay. I see. Oh, oh it startled me. <laughs> okay. Oh, that startled me. Let's see. Here we go. Okay. So, so I'm gonna pour that in with. need to add more water than that though. I don't know how much water that actually is, but yeah. I want to get the I want to get this shit off of here. You guys think this is good? Like like okay I put one can in and then maybe one more can it says I put a can of this, which is more than these cans, because these are, this is, how many fluid ounces? I'm trying to find out. Okay, this is 14.5, and this is 10.5. Okay, so those are way smaller. Just trying to get all the shit out of there. It's got two packets of rice and roni, so I think you need at least one can for each. Ten. So ten. And this is what? Fourteen. So let's all, let's just say fifteen. So that would be half. So like half a can, right? Half a can of this if I were gonna do two cans of soup. Okay. I think that might work. Okay. Wait. So like half a can. Yeah, okay. Okay, so show you this is actually pretty good let me see if I can get this up a little so you can see this this is actually pretty yummy there we go and then you put your like seasoning packets in there I'm guessing on the amount of water hopefully I did that right cups. I wonder how many cups these are. How much this makes. If this is a whole cup or not. Well, let's see how much this makes. But see, look, it just kind of mix it together. It makes like a sauce. Mm. I was thinking about putting onion 
onions, cutting up some onions and putting it in there. I don't know. I might put onions in there. I don't know. I like French fried onions. See, look at it. You make, mix it all together and it turns into a, a creamy, more of a creamy base. But, oh yeah, I forget about the two cups because I put these in too. Besides the water, I put the, okay, I put the other in there. So I think this is actually going to be enough. I'm going to let that. And then I've got my chicken breast, which I want to season. Ooh, these are some big ass chicken breasts, too, man. Yeah. They're big. Okay, I got to season the shit out of these, too. Spike, you want some of this? Some chicken fat. Spike, come here, buddy. You want a treat? Uh huh. You always give the dog the treat. He doesn't want it right now. He'll come back. Okay, I know we had some seasoning. I think. Ah! Ah! Whoops. I think my seasoning's over here. I gotta move this. Do, do, do. Oh, where's that seasoning at? Ooh! I've got onion. I've got this I love this that chopped dried onion I'm not gonna add anything to it damn it I'm not gonna do it okay because I know what tastes good um, I can't remember where it goes seasoning is for the chicken god dang it ah where is it is it over here somewhere Oh, it's, it's up here. I found it. I found it. I found it. I found it. Okay, this is what we're going to... Cabra. Cabra. Uh, Cuckalicious poultry seasoning. <laughs> it does It smells really good. See, that's a good seasoning. So, I think I will go ahead and season it up pretty good. So that the chicken can taste like chukacabra. We need chud seasoning. Chud chicken. <laughs> chud chicken. I don't know if I'd want to eat chud chicken. Okay. This is uh. Don't fall in there. <laughs> ah. Put your tin foil, and I, I put my oven at 350, so you'll put this, cover it up, and an hour later, we should have some ooey, yummy, good, good chicken and rice combination. And I've seen lots of um, different uh, recipes on there. You can do it all different kinds of ways, but that's the way I think I like it, the way I'm used to eating it. At home, I always made this, but I lost my recipe, so I'm kind of winging it a little bit. But. Nope. And that's all you gotta do. Isn't that easy? 
And then you just put it in. For an hour, we still got this thing on? Yes, okay. Oh, I forgot to take this pan out of here, damn. I always do that. I'm not used to sticking things in the oven, so when I, things are stuck in the oven, I tend to uh, forget that they're in there. Okay. And just put this in here. There we go. One hour. Now I gotta set this. I'm very bad at setting this timer. Okay, set. Okay, look at this, because this is so weird. Okay, I want to show you this. Because <laughs> this, me and this, me and this um, stove go round and round. So, okay, so I hit set. And then, oh wait, no, I don't need minutes, do I? I need an hour. Usually, you would think you'd hit set and it would start. But no, you need to hit start, I think. I always fuck it up somehow. I don't know if it's I put the hour on instead of minutes. I've done all kinds of shit, but I get up a lot. But it's working now. You are my witness. It is working. It's at 350. Okay. Whew. Whew. Okay. So now I have a little bit of a mess to clean up, but that's what's for dinner tonight. I have a, we had a chicken was on sale, and Echo got some chicken breasts. So we were trying to figure out what to make. I decided that that's what I wanted to make. Okay. Hopefully it turns out okay. <laughs> Echo is a very, very good cook, so it's kind of intimidating to cook for a man who is a really good cook when you're not. I'm not a good cook. I'm not a real good cook. I like to cook a few things. I can cook a few things, but... Um, Echo cooks kind of like, if any of you know, know the porch people, um, that's what they're called, the porch people, but Jennifer um, from the People's Convoy, and, and they're now the porch people, she cooks with love. Like, she, she cooks the same as, like, Echo does, in a way. They both cook with flavor, layering flavors, um, uh... Like, they make sure that flavors that you wouldn't even think about, like, you wouldn't really notice it, but they add it at a certain time to make sure that it, it, show, um, it will be taste later. It'll, it'll make it taste really good. And I'm just not like that. I, I put a couple chicken breasts. I've never even flavored my chicken breasts. I've always just thrown them in there. Um, so I was doing that. He's making me be a better cook, see? <laughs> God dang it. <laughs> making me be a better cook. No, I like to eat. He's, his food is so good. But I got this today. I got salad beans and a head of lettuce. Let me throw this in here. And what else did I get? Oops. Clean up my mess. Okay, throw that shit away. Okay. Um, oh, I got the Ken Steakhouse Raspberry Walnut Vinaigrette Salad. So I got a head of lettuce and I got some croutons. I got croutons too. Got some Texas Toast crouton. I am set for my salad. And I don't know if you guys ever go to, they have them at Kroger's too, but like those fresh baked, I've already torn into it if you can't tell. Fresh baked bread, like Italian loaf, I think it is. But, oh, my God, it's so good. So good. Okay, well, let's hope that works out well. <sighs> I need you guys. Oh, that is a good idea. I could always set my timer, my cell phone timer on. I made this the other day. Let me show you. It's We've kind of made a mess of it, but if you ever made those brownie mixes where it's got brownie and and chocolate chip cookie on top mm -hmm. got chocolate chip cookies and chip cookie brownies they had them two for two for five dollars so i got i got two of them if you guys ever try those cookie brownie bake mix yummy yummy very very good Oh, 
Well, my work is done. I come back an hour later and eat. See, that's the nice thing about it. You come back an hour later and you just eat. You eat, eat, eat. You can buy them. Walmart, they're actually black and beans. But with Dr. I'm going to set you up real quick here because I need to go use the restroom. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back, <laughs> and I'm not in the laundry room to do laundry. <laughs> so, there have been some people doing some really wild shit lately. Um, I haven't been watching too much, but I've been watching enough. See, I have a Twitter account, and it's a really funny thing. I got this thing called Twitter. <laughs> I discovered it was all this time I've been thinking, why do I need Twitter? I'm not sure what this Twitter stuff. I was like, why would anybody want to hear what somebody has to say? Like, so if you have a thought, you just like type it out. And who listens? Who gives a shit what I have to say? Who gives a shit what other people have to say? I didn't understand it. I didn't understand the hashtagging. I didn't understand what hashtagging really was and, and why it made any kind of difference. I'm figuring it out, folks. I'm figuring out hashtags and I'm figuring out Twitter. You know, you don't have to sit through hours and hours of watching other people say things. You can literally go to Twitter and put a hashtag in and you'll get all the information at, the, at your fingertips. It's pretty fucking cool. And if you want to, you see something, you can hashtag it and everybody else can see it too. And they do care what you have to say when it's something about something that they care about. Yeah. Hashtags, folks. We got some hashtags. I like to look at hashtag 1776RM. If ever you have something derogatory to say about 1776RM, hashtag it. Hashtag, hashtag, hashtag. Got another one going. Hashtag mags get a job. Hashtag mags get a job. Just hashtag the shit out of it. Hashtag it on every answer to everything about 1776RM. Hashtag mags get a job. I got one I started that nobody else is really using yet. It's called hashtag Oreo Express Beats Women. Woo! I like that one. Hashtag Oreo Express Beats Women. Mm. There's a hashtag Evict Freedom Corner. That's for all the information that has to do with the people down on Freedom Corner. So if you have something, again, to put out that's bad about 1776 RM, they're also some of the people down there on Freedom Corner. So hashtag the shit out of that. Hashtag evict Freedom Corner along with it. Hashtag J6. Hashtag J6 Vigil. And guess what? All the J6 people will see it too. So when you're talking about Sean McHugh being a fucking pedophile, hashtag the J6 Vigil people. Like the people who are going to look at Freedom Corner. Let them know because I guarantee you most of them do not know that Sean McHugh is a fucking pedophile. So when I have that to say, I make sure that I put just hashtag J6 or hashtag J6 Vigil or hashtag Freedom Corner. So that the people who are looking it up will see my information. Uh-huh. Here's another thing. You hashtag 1776RM and... <clears throat> Put it and just hashtag and make sure that you tell about the pedophiles and stuff. And guess what? When people look up 1776RM, they see all your little hashtags. So they get the truth. It's a way of getting the truth out. 
It's a way of getting the truth out. Hashtag, hashtag, hashtag people. Do the right hashtags. Hmm. I tell people, go ha look up hashtag 1776RM. There's my proof. It's all over the fucking social media because it is. And we need to hashtag the shit out of stuff because we do get information out and it is a way of getting information out and they don't like it. Mags admitted it, that it's been effective. See, they didn't, they kicked Dom out, but Dom knew early on that he said, guys, we're, this is back in DC. He was like, guys, we're getting killed on Twitter. We got to, we got to make a presence there and everything. Well, they got, ended up getting themselves kicked off Facebook <laughs> and now the hashtag Twitter stuff, we, we're, we're killing them on Twitter. People are telling the truth about 1776RM on Twitter. Now, I put on Twitter, if you're on Twitter, check it out. I, I think I'm going to post it also on my uh, community page here on YouTube, okay? 1776RM is being, um, oh, a long time ago, girl. They got kicked off of Facebook a long time ago. Um, seven, uh, 1776 is going to be a guest speaker, huh? Guest speaker at, um, let me see if I can get it right. I didn't look it up before I got on here. Citizens, somebody help me. Is it citizens for Amer America? Something like that. I'm going to put it out. I got the information on Twitter, but I looked it up. There's another group that they're going to be having a meeting on. Um, they're going to be the guest speaker at, at a meeting um, for this other group. Uh, so I've got all the information. I've got the phone number of this place. They put it out. They have a, I looked up their website and on their website, it has a phone number, an email, and they so kindly gave us, it's in North Carolina. They so kindly gave us all, all of the representatives that we need to contact to make sure that they don't do anything with 1776 RM or any other group that's associated with them. So the contact information for this citizens uh, for America or something, I'm going to look it up. Um, they uh, so kindly put all the information out for us. So I'm going to go ahead and regurgitate that information to you. And we will have the phone number and email of the organization to let them know don't you don't want anything to do with 1776RM. Here's why. Pedophiles, pedophiles, pedophiles. And if they don't listen and they still continue with them, we also have the politicians' phone numbers, the local politicians that they're trying to be influential over, and we're going to have to let them know. You don't want to deal with these people. The <laughs> Pedophiles, pedophiles, pedophiles. And tell them the whole story about that. Then they also so kindly put the uh, newspapers and news organizations and their contact information so we can also tell them about any politician who dares, who dares to be associated with 1776 RM. <laughs> news, news, news. So we got a lot of information from this organization. Thank you. Don't associate with pedophiles and pedophile protectors. Don't do it. Don't do it, citizens. <laughs> Don't do it. And it's going to be at a steakhouse. I think I'm going to call the steakhouse and also let the steakhouse know that they are putting on for a guest speaker who lets pedophiles live with children. Pedophile protectors. Hmm. Pedophile, pedophile, pedophile. See that word? Pedophile, pedophile, pedophile. You don't want that word associated with you when you are a fucking um, uh, politician, for sure. Pedophile. What politician wants the word pedophile associated with them? None. None want that. It's a bad thing. That, that, that's, a, that's a killer of... Um, a political careers. Pedophilia. It sure as hell should be. So, eventually, eventually, they'll stop trying because they're going to keep getting knocked down. 
Look at what happened to J.J. J.J. associated himself with Americans for America, I think it was, and they're stepping back. I mean, like, nobody wants to be associated with these people, and, and for good reason. They shouldn't be. Nobody should be associated with these people. These people um, will kill your organization, good or bad. Um, I had a, a politician back home who I saw him on um, uh, one, one American no party. <laughs> good old Vern, the one that, you know, raised money for pedophiles, pedophiles, pedophiles. Yeah, that one. And this is a, a very Christian guy. Um, so I made sure he knew. And he's like, oh, my God, I didn't know about that. Well, you do now. So, I mean, it's just a matter of letting people know. We got to let people know. We, uh, I'd like to find out what politicians were um, associated at the um, 1776 and them. David Valentine went down to meet um, David Riddell, Liberty Voice. Um, Lady Buckeye, um, there were a couple of dudes there too. And, um, they all went to this Kentucky, um, like meet and greet dinner kind of thing that they have with politicians. So we need to find out what politicians were there, what groups, make sure people know, just got to make sure people know it's no wonder that they picked fucking Kentucky. Kentucky's been passing some laws and stuff. See, they try to get in on the very conservative, more conservative uh, states like Indiana. Um, because their, their thing is they say they're for the Constitution. And they try to, they, they, they say that they're no party and all this bullshit, that they're not right or left. They are right. Don't let them lie to you. They are very right. And they are going for the Republican politicians, not the Democrat politicians. They already oppose the Democrat politicians on every fucking level. Okay. So it would be disingenuous for, of them to say that they're, oh, we're fine with, no, you're not. Um, so they're against the Democrats. So they're not trying to work with Democrats, but they're trying to work with the Republican ones. They want to get their, their thing is to get enough power so that when they speak, the politicians listen. When the politicians do something they don't like, they can tell them, we're not going to vote for you. We're going to be against you. And the politicians listen. It's not going to happen. Um, especially with those of us who know your history, telling them, pedophile, pedophile, pedophile. <laughs> but this is the way it's done now. Um, the time for protest is done of protesting as in the protest on the streets. The protest has gone to um, social media. And you can see their reaction to it on social media too. You've got 76, got people out threatening other people and stuff, right? Doxing. Oh, the doxing. And I'm watching this from both sides. The fucking doxing has been nuts. Like, I've been seeing people dox all over. I mean, like, it's like nobody has any fucking um, ethics anymore or morals anymore. Um, they just fucking put you out there like nothing. Here's her address. Here's her phone number. Here's his phone number. Here's his address. Ah, why don't you go hit him? Why don't you go beat them? Go on, go on. Like they, they think they can get away with that shit. Um, you're just a bad person if that's what you're doing. You're doing bad shit. It is cray cray. Very cray cray. Very cray cray. Listen, my little brain thinks of lots of bad shit that I'd like to do to people sometimes. It's like, oh man, you fucking piss me off, you know? But I don't do them. And there's a reason for that because... I know they're wrong. And I know that it makes me bad when I do them. <clears throat> right? It makes you bad when you do them. So you don't do them. You know, and that's what I will say. That's what I always liked about Telescope. Is that we, don't, we disagree on a lot of shit. But we agree on, on a lot of the very fundamental things. Such as not doxing. You know? putting somebody's home address out and phone phone number and all that. Yeah. No. Um, there's certain things that we, we agree 
the, and it's funny because it's the two people who we, we have very different views on shit, but we can agree that there are limits as to what you do. It, it's the same for this protesting stuff. I, I'm, I'm, I try to, in situations, take myself out of it and my own biases out of it and say, if it's good for this person, is it good for that person? If it's bad for this person, is it bad for that person? I'm not perfect, but I try to do that. And so when I see these protests and I see people beating each other, kicking each other, spraying each other with mace, um, doing all this stuff, doxing each other, it's wrong. It's wrong. I don't care if it's the right doing it, the left doing it, the middle. I don't care who the fuck you are doing it. When you do it, it's wrong. You, you don't get to be violent. You don't get to punch a Nazi. You don't get to punch a Republican. You don't get to punch a Democrat. You don't get to punch a liberal. You keep your little motherfucking hands to yourself. That's what you do. Now, you can shout your shit out all you want and tell them, you can call them a piece of shit. You can do all kinds of stuff. But you don't get to lay hands on people. And you don't get to threaten to lay hands on people. That's wrong. That, for me, I believe that that is wrong. And I don't care who it is. The only time you get to put hands on somebody is in self-fucking-defense. You don't get to put hands on people because they don't listen to you or because you don't like what they're saying. Whatever your little excuse is, you don't get to fucking just put hands on people. And you don't get to threaten to put hands on people. You don't get to threaten to rape people. You don't get to threaten to rape people's mothers. Yes, exactly, Echo. Yep. And we got a lot of people out there making threats. And threatening and threatening and threatening. And... They think because it's on social media. Oh, ha, ha, ha. I just said something. I didn't really mean it. Well, when you threaten people and you threaten to do bad stuff and then you go and dox them and give them your, give them your address and, and your phone number and all that shit, what happens when someone does show up at your place that has nothing to do with any of it and just comes and hurts or kills that person, whoever it may be? What, to what will you be held responsible for that? To what will you be held responsible for that? The people encouraging, the people who are saying shit like, hey, somebody grab a stick and go hit that person on the head. By the way, here's their address. To what extent, if somebody does do it, will you be held responsible? Will you be put in prison? Will you be sued? To what extent will you be morally responsible. I'm hearing a lot of people out there spouting how moral they are, how they're Christians, and they're these great moral people that are going to bring us back to a moral society. And I'm seeing them do some very immoral, bad things. And they justify it. They justify letting pedophiles live with kids. They justify uh, hurting people. They justify threatening people. You justify threatening to rape people. You justify threatening to rape women. Is there no low that you guys won't go to? And I want to say this for both right, left, middle, all of us. We need to all start holding ourselves accountable. Hold yourself accountable. I, I try to do this. I'm not perfect. And I make mistakes, but I'm telling you, we got to all start holding ourselves fucking accountable. Live by your morals. Don't pull a Jay Lynn where you say, oh, I get to go do it to you because you did it to me. I think it's bad to do it, but I get to do it because you did that to me first. No, if it's bad for you to do it, then it's bad for you to do it. Don't do it. Just because other people do bad shit doesn't mean that you get to do bad shit too. And we are getting put in that position in our country, unfortunately, where in the courts and, and in with the police and just everywhere, we're seeing where it's okay for these people to do something, but it's not okay for you to do something, you know? And it makes people get upset. I get that. I fucking get it because it sucks. It sucks. It sucks that other people get to get away with shit sometimes. But you know what? It doesn't give us 
It doesn't give us justification for doing the very same said thing that we said was wrong. And we all need to take a step back and, and, and realize this. We need to step back and realize it. Hi, Smart and Sassy. I'm seeing a lot of bad behavior <coughs> by people some of us like and some of us support. You know what happened? Can you let me know what's going on? Just send me a little something, something. Um, we need to all start really take a step back and self-evaluate. And self-evaluate. What you do, is it is it right or is it wrong? Is it right or is it wrong? And if it's wrong for the other guy, it's wrong for you too. So I think we need to start definitely in our country, we have to figure out some rules, like the rules of protest. The rules of protest should be the same no matter who you are, okay? If it's wrong to be in the streets for one group and to shut down the street for one group, it's wrong for the other group. If it's wrong for people to do something while they're protesting and then this group, it's the same for the other group. I'm going to put one out there that I know a lot of you aren't going to like, okay? But if it's wrong to enter a fucking Capitol building when you're one person, it's wrong to enter a Capitol building when you're the other person. If it's, I wondered what you did. Uh, if it's wrong for one group to disrupt a proceeding in a Capitol building, it's wrong for the other groups to go into a Capitol building and start screaming and having bullhorns and causing a ruckus and trying to stop proceedings. I don't care if you think your cause is just. Guess what? So did the other people. What? Everybody that does it thinks that their cause is the just one. Their cause is the right one. The U.S. Capitol was closed to the public. Girl, I hope that you are not, and I. there I go. I'm going to misgender maybe. But Max Flower, it's wrong. If it's wrong for one group, it's wrong for another group. It's wrong to disrupt and try to stop the proceedings. That was called an insurrection on January 6th. I hear a lot of insurrection, insurrection. Well, what is it when you go into the Capitol building and you, you have to get yourself thrown out and arrested because you're causing such a scene to try to stop the actual proceedings that are going on? What would you call that? Everybody called it an insurrection when it was over here. I want to know why is it it's okay over here and there's crickets. I hear nothing about how bad that is that these people are disrupting Inside a Capitol building. Inside. Inside a Capitol building. I want to know. I want to know why it's so fucking bad for these people, but you have nothing to say. And I don't mean you, Max Flower. I mean people, a lot of people, that have nothing to say over here. Unless it's they actually think it's okay. So is it okay or isn't it okay? Therein lies a lot of people's frustrations. That people tend to say, well, if it's our group, it's okay. If it's, if it's this group, it's wrong. And instead of saying, listen, let's figure out the rules for everybody. And then we all follow the same rules. It gets very frustrating. And it's easy for people to say, you know what? Fuck it then. Fuck it. If they don't have to follow the rules, neither do I. If they don't have to follow the rules, if they can be this or that, then I get to do it too. I get to do it too. No, you don't. If it's wrong, it's wrong. If it's wrong, it's wrong. It's wrong for everybody, not just a select group. And we're, we're a lot of groups, and I mean groups, period, right and left. I'm talking to everybody, every one of us. We want to give grace to our side. We want to give our side the benefit of the doubt. 
But the other side, went, ah, right away, they're, they're evil, they're bad. I've been saying this for a long time. This is human fucking nature. That if you don't like somebody or you don't like a group, you will automatically give, make it so that whatever they do, it's done with a bad intention in your mind. You look for the bad intention. But when you have somebody you like or you have a group that you're a part of or you have a group that you like, You'll do, you'll give them the benefit of the doubt. Oh, I'm sure we'll, we'll make an excuse for that one. You know, I, he didn't really mean that or they're, they're really a good person. No, we need to start being a little better about that. All of us. Because if it's wrong for them to dox you, it's wrong for you to dox them. And just because they dox you doesn't mean you get to go dox them. <laughs> Hold yourself accountable. That's what I'm trying to say, people, is we all got to hold ourselves fucking accountable. And just because people do bad things doesn't mean you get to do bad things. Maybe do what's right. It's hard. It's hard to fight people who are, who are um, cheating. You know, um, people who refuse to follow their own morals that they try to push on you. But you still got to be able to get through the, the battle, get through the fight, and have your honor intact. It's, that's what it's about. It matters. It matters how you get there. And if you do a bunch of bad shit to get there, you don't deserve the prize. Because now you're a piece of shit human being when you get there. It's easy to take shortcuts. It's easy to take the shortcuts and to do the bad shit. It's easy. That's the easy way. The easy way is to just go hurt somebody and force them to do what the fuck you want. That is the easy way. The easy way is to threaten them back or to dox them back or to hurt them back. That's the easy way. But you become the very evil that you fight when you do that. You become the bad person in the story. I've done it before. I've responded in bad ways and done bad things because somebody did it to me and I was going to teach them a lesson. And you know what it did? It made me a bad person. It made me the bad guy. It made me the bad guy. And made me ashamed of myself and made me feel bad because I knew that I had done wrong. I don't need to be a Christian to know that. I have to live with me. And I want to get out of all this being still a good person. I want to be a good person. I think it matters how you get there. I think the journey is just as important as the outcome. And if you can't keep, you can't even live up to your own standards of what's right and wrong, then you need to reevaluate. You need to look in the mirror and reevaluate yourself. And we all got to do it sometimes. Yeah. J6 has been on your mind. Yeah, it is sad how the capital was, our capital was disgraced. I have said it before. Um, I, I feel... That anybody who entered the Capitol, you knew you weren't supposed to do that. It was wrong. That the people who who hit or tried to assault police, wrong. You don't do that. You don't get to do that. The people who were violent on that day, they do need to be prosecuted. Absolutely. I don't think the people that were there protesting and that did stay peaceful should be prosecuted any more than the BLM people who were peaceful and stayed peaceful and did peaceful protesting should be responsible for what the very few people did that went and rioted and did bad stuff. It, we got to be treated the same. We got to start looking at things the same. We're not all evil. We're not all bad. We're not all good just because of a cause. Start, start thinking about this shit and, and 
Try to be honest with yourself. Am I, is this my bias speaking? Is this, is this my own beliefs? Or am I really trying to honestly make things even? It is the same day, but the same tired out story. I hear people who, who talk very badly about one group or one day and they, they are all on it, but then they're, they're crickets and they got nothing to say unless it's to actually say it's okay when someone else does, oops, does the very same thing, but they like their cause. So it's okay. No, no, we need to all be held to the same standards. Be held to the same standards. That's been on my mind lately because I've been seeing a lot of really bad fucking behavior. Joe, it's all about the money. The prosecutors, DAs, judges, police, it's always about who signs my paycheck. Instead of coming together, these slaves would rather just fight amongst themselves. You don't think so? Never, never go away. I think that there's people who can be honest with themselves and that, that are willing to recognize their bias and... Um, Put it aside for the sake of conversation, for the sake of justice, for the sake of whatever. I believe that. And, and that's what we need to do because that's what justice is. Justice is supposed to be blind. It's not supposed to see your skin color, your gender, any of that stuff. It's not supposed to see whether you're a Republican or a Democrat if this whole 76 stuff has not shown us, it has, it has shown me. That and, and all the stuff that I'm be, getting my eyes open to, our justice system is for shit. Our justice system is not blind. Not even close. It does matter. It does matter. Which, which place you're in, whether you got the liberal judge or the conservative judge, depending on who you are. Because you're going to get treated different in different places and in different courts. Are you fucking kidding me? We're supposed to all be treated the same. Equal. You come to the court of law. And that that's an important place. The court of fucking law. I found that out real quick, didn't I? And you have people who are willing. When you have somebody who is willing to go in and point at you and try to say, Antifa, Antifa, Antifa. Me conservative. Me conservative. Me proud boy. That tells me that that is a, a, a court that favors that side and doesn't like the other side. And look at the outcome. We see it everywhere. I've been seeing it all over. And it's not just my situation. It's for a lot of situations. <laughs> Jim, see, that's the thing. I agree that uh, I think that we need to have that whole situation looked at. I would like to have some um, information about the whole thing with Ashley Babbitt. I would like to see some information. I would like to know what are the rules of engagement, you know? I'd like to hear that all out. I don't want shit hidden. I would like for them to release video and all this shit, right? But, but I've said this more than one time, very clearly, that when you are committing a crime and you are a criminal, 
someone who broke into, and I'll say it again, broke in. I don't care if the door was open. You broke into the fucking Capitol building that you knew you weren't supposed to be in. And you were told, look, it, we all know you're supposed to be getting out. You weren't supposed to be getting in. You tried to go through a fucking broken window. Trying to get in where the police at, and the, the, the um, politicians were barricaded. I don't want to hear murder anymore. You were killed while doing a crime. You're not some innocent little... Ashley Babbitt is not some innocent little fucking victim. I tried to look at that. If this was BLM, if this was BLM that broke into our Capitol building and one of them got shot going through a window that one of the other ones had broken and it was the filled, if the same thing had happened and it was BLM, okay... What would the right be saying about it? Fuck the cause. Fuck the cause, right? Whatever the cause is, it should be the same rules for everybody. Everybody. If you didn't like violence here, you don't like violence there. You didn't like violence for this group, you don't like violence for that group. And I know that if it had not been J6, see, a lot of the people on the right would be saying, should have shot her. Should have shot her. Good job. Good job. You shot her. You stopped that fucking insurrection. They would have been calling her an insurrectionist if she'd have been BLM. So I want to I want to get the facts, but I my little point of view is take out the cause and look at what people are doing. So Judge Judy said something a long time ago that always stuck in my head about coming to court with clean hands. Don't come to court with dirty hands. If you're a criminal, it's even harder to get justice for things that do happen to you because you're doing a criminal, criminal thing. You can't be defrauding the government and then get mad that somebody stole your money that you were defrauding the government from and then expect the government to get it back for you. I don't know, Joe. I don't know. I need that information. I want to know what the rules of engagement are. I want to know what Nancy Pelosi told people. I want the facts about that day to come out. The actual fucking facts. They don't need to be hidden for national security reasons. We need the facts of what really happened. How, how many people, who they were, how many police, how many feds. Um, I want all the information and then we can make we can make our decisions about that day. But they like to hide shit. It's the same with the BLM stuff. We need facts. People need to look at facts. Instead of just, oh, I don't like that cause or I don't like that person, so I'm going to demonize everything that they do. We do need to look at facts. Even I'm talking to me, too. Bird is about as incompetent as they come. Terrible. Yes, and that we need to know more about this bird guy. We need to know about, um, we just, we need all the fucking facts. And I'm tired of people, they hide shit from us. All, the news, the, the government, they hide it from us. Yes, I think there were lots and lots of feds, but, you know, I mean, like, we, we need facts. Without facts, it's just a bunch of supposing. It's just a bunch of supposing, isn't it? <laughs> and and honestly, the the media has an agenda, whether it's right media or left media, they have an agenda that they want to push on their on their viewership. And I really from being talking to both sides on issues I find that a lot of people from both sides, they get fed such a diet of their media and their facts and their way of looking at, at an event that they, they, they don't take, they don't step back and try to look at the other side and try to get information from that side and see it from that side. Um, it has been eye-opening to me. It really has to be around people who are liberal or to the left and to hear and to see what they see instead of what I see or what I hear. And it doesn't mean I agree with everything, 
it's just that I see it now and I see why I see where they come from. There are people who are heart fucking broken over January 6th and what happened at that cap. I mean, heartbroken. Um, and then there are people that are just angry about that day. There are people who feel justified about some of the stuff that happened that was, that was unjustifiable. Um, it, it's just, it's amazing. You have to really listen to people and to see what, what are they being told? Because a lot of them don't have the, if you don't listen to the other side, you, you're missing a lot of shit. You're missing a lot of shit because both sides like to tell on each other too. And so like this side's always telling about this side, everything they do wrong. And this side's telling everything about this side. And you miss some shit if all you do is listen to one side or the other. So I'm, I would encourage people start listening to both sides. And um, that's the, the good part about actually listening and having conversations with people that you disagree with is... You, you don't get to hear what what they what they've been told you may miss some facts that you wouldn't have known because you don't hear it from this side you know uh, you get to see a different point of view and then maybe you get an understanding of why people feel the way they feel and then it'll help you in your next conversation in your next conversation a lot of people will not listen but there are people who will <laughs> there are people who will No, the masses do not think. Absolutely, Destroyer. Um, I, and I've learned that from being in the situation and watching situations. When you are in a situation with the masses or a group of people, group think tends to take over. Um, and it's very easy to fall into that group think. And um, especially if you're protesting and stuff, to just kind of uh, be told something and, oh, we all think this, or to go in with it. Um and get carried away even, it, it, it is very easy to do. Um, but we still have to know right from wrong and hold ourselves accountable. I've, I've done shit before, um, and I'm not talking about J6 now. I'm talking about like when our, the protesting was like 76 and stuff. There's been shit that I've said that I normally wouldn't say. Um, there have been a few things that I've done that I regret doing or saying. And it's like, you know, I shouldn't have done that. And I I just have to accept it and go on and move on and say, you know what? I'm going to do better. But I'm going to have to hold myself to a standard and I'm going to have to do better now, you know? So I talk to myself about this all the time. <laughs> I got just a little bit of beer. I need to get another lager. Wait, the motions get fueled. Yes, 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 people do. They get so fueled and stuck to their ideals, they have failed to use any sort, I gotta get it back up, any sort of discernment or critical thinking. Yes, that's what I'm trying to say, is that people don't, oh, I get into it too. We, we get so into, oh, only, oh, 12 minutes, 12 minutes left, and then my, my rice stuff is done. But yes, we get so into, um, into our cause, into, into our belief system, um, and we get our emotions get going, and then you get other people involved, and pretty soon you forget to fucking actually stop and think things out. <laughs> I'm drunk, you has done that too. I, I'm not drunk. I'm not drunk. I've only had a couple beers, and it's been over time, a couple out, a few hours. I ain't gonna get another one though. Hi, buddy. I got spiky. Spiky wants a beer. You want a beer too? Oh, wait, I did have something for you. I had something for him. See if he wants it. See if he wants it. Here you go, buddy. Wait. Oh, here it is. Hold on, hold on. It's a little piece of the chicken fat. That's it. Good boy. Good boy. Uh uh. No, wait. Watch me. Okay, there you go. <laughs> yeah, you're a good boy. All gone. It's all gone, Neil. Yeah, it's all gone. The hand that feeds, huh? Let me wash my hand now. 
I don't have any more. I don't have any more. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> Spiky, he loves that chicken, chicken fat. Any kind of meat. What cutie pie? No, you don't get to you don't get to have my bear. I'm gonna say hi to everybody. What movie? Oh, that is a good movie, Joe Shooter. Yes. <laughs> that is a good movie. Hashtag where is Vinny? Oh my god. You you have to go back. Mr. Brown, you're just going to have to go back and look, aren't you? I did a whole thing at the beginning. That's why it's called hay. <laughs> I went and bought hay for Vinny. My little Vin man. It's so nice out here. Oh, it's a good one. Oh, and Training Day. That's a good one, too, you guys. Those are both good movies. Oh. Feelings are humanities. Well, we can't help it. That's what I keep saying is that everybody keeps saying that they're journalists and stuff. No, you're not. You're not media. You're not journalists. You know what a journalist is to me? Huh? Journalists used to be like um, Lois Lane. I keep saying this. Lois Lane. Lois Lane was a journalist. Lois Lane is from Superman. And she would go out and she would try to find the dirt, the story. She wanted to find out the truth. The truth. It was always about finding out the truth. We don't have journalists anymore. Nobody wants to find out the fucking truth and reveal the truth. They just want to find something that shows their point of view and then push that on you. Which is why I tried to start live streaming. <laughs> oh, yes. Get rid of Batman Bree. Yes. Ugh, ugh. That name is over on um, Twitter. <laughs> Always th saying stupid shit. <laughs> like talking about Vinny, that I ate Vinny and shit like that. Thank you, Peace. Hi, ladies. <laughs> yes, yeah, shooter and training day. That you you're in for a, you're in for a treat. I, of course, I really, really like, um, I don't know, Destroyer, if you're a man or a woman, but <laughs> um, what's his name? Mark Wahlberg was really good in that. He was really, really good. Is Shooter, no, Shooter is not a Western. It's got, um, who did I just say? What was his, what was his name? Okay, come on. What was his name? Mark Wahlberg. 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 Mark Wahlberg is in Shooter, and it's kind of like he's up in the hills and has to do with the president, somebody trying to shoot the president. <laughs> yes, I love you, ladies. <laughs> and Training Day with, with was with Denzel Washington. I, I don't remember the storyline, though. I know it was a good movie, and I enjoy, I enjoy almost all of Denzel's Washington's I love I love his movies. He's a pretty good actor. But um kind of goes like Hi Tanya. Oh no, it's not like a John Wayne one. It's like one thing I will say is um kind of on this on this thread is something that I've been noticing is people like to tribe up or they like to get in there. It, it doesn't matter what it is. Um, I keep hearing the word cult thrown around. People are very cultish nowadays. Have you haven't noticed? <laughs> if you haven't noticed, people are very cultish nowadays. And it could be even, even like the trans thing and the LGBTQI, I call them the alphabet mob, um, has become very cultish. Like you're not allowed to dissent or, or even if you're even perceived 
even perceived as maybe being against me. Whap, whap, whap. I mean, they will whap you. And it reminds me of 76, the way 76 was and is. We don't allow anybody to dissent at all. We don't let, let any freedom of opinion. And if we even think that you just might be questioning us, we are going to get you out and gone. You are done. I'm seeing a lot of cult-like behaviors where it just depends on who's doing it. Never, never be that way about a person or a group or a group of people. Never. It's very broad brushing like that. And it's, it's where you, your morality depends on who's doing thing, you know? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> We're going to have movie night. That is definitely a good one to watch. Definitely a good one to watch. I guess I, I just get personally, I get tired of people always justifying bad behavior and then making everybody else follow the rules. <laughs> You know, it's like, if you don't want people to do bad stuff to you, don't, don't do that bad stuff. You got to be able to say, but I don't do that. You know, um, you can't be trying to murder somebody and they are violent back and then get mad that they were violent back. You know, I mean, like, you just can't be doing bad shit. Start, start holding your fucking selves accountable. We all do. We all need to start holding ourselves accountable and we need to start really recognizing that we have biases. Anybody who says that they don't have biases is a liar. When someone says they don't have a bias, they're a fucking liar, okay? They do have their biases, whatever they are, whether it's from their life experience, their belief systems, whatever. They have their biases. And people who won't admit that they have them are lying to themselves and to you. Don't trust them. And here's another little tidbit that Lori has for everybody today. This is my tidbit of information I want to give out to you. Watch how people treat their perceived enemies. Watch how people treat people they don't like when they're angry at them. Watch what they will do to them. Because if they will do it to them when they are angry at you, they'll do it to you too. So all those people who love to hang around people who threaten to do bad stuff to other people and dox them, you think it's fucking hilarious now, but if you're hanging with them, no, they're going to do it to you. I got taught that lesson. I got taught that lesson more than once in life, <laughs> but I'm learning. Let me tell you and say it again. Watch before you date a man, even, watch how he treats his enemies. Watch how he treats women, other women, when he's mad at them. You be walking around with a man that likes to go and call women cunts and bitches and threaten women and shit. What the fuck do you think he's going to do to you when you piss him off and he gets mad at you? He's going to be doing the same shit to you. It's that whole thing. Watch. If people are going to dox other people, they will fucking dox you too. They threaten to rape other people, they will threaten to rape you too. You won't think it's fucking hilarious. But, because you'll think you are you don't deserve it. Just say it. That's just my little tidbit. Be, be, we need to be more careful, all of us. I Myself included. I've, I've learned my lesson here and there, you know, but I'm trying to be more careful. Pick your friends, pick your, your, your mates, your, your partners, all of it. Be, be careful. Be careful who you trust because those people that tell you everything about everybody else, they're going to tell everybody about you. That's my own little tidbit. <laughs> So that's, I'm going to leave you with that. <laughs> hey, Mo. <laughs> I'm going to leave you all with that thought. 
those little two thoughts that I did today. And hopefully we can all try to at least start looking at things a little more honest and holding ourselves accountable. I get that it's funny. It is funny. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. It's fucking hilarious when something bad happens to somebody who's a bad person. It's like somebody doing a really bad thing and then they trip and fall. You laugh. You're like, yep, you deserve that. That was karma gotcha. Karma gotcha. I get it. We laugh when bad things happen to bad, pe to bad people. Like Cookie getting his fucking phone stolen. I laughed. Because Cookie's a bad fucking person. At the same time, I said, whoever stole his phone, what you did was wrong. That, that's not acceptable. And the police should deal with that, right? It was theft of property. At the same time, you laugh. Because people who do bad, bad shit, like doxing women and children and being violent towards people and threatening people, eventually it does come back and bite them on the ass. If it hadn't been that, it would have been some other karma that would have got somebody. But... Um, we need to stop justifying behaviors. It, it's still wrong what happened. And I'll say that straight out. It was wrong. Whoever did it, it was wrong. And we need to start all living by the same rules and living up to our own morals. So, peace out. I got to go check my chicken and rice. But it's going to be good. I guarantee I'm it. I think I had like 12 minutes left in there. <laughs> Gotta go, gotta go feed Echo. <laughs> but I hope you guys, I love what, what, what Barry says is be a light. Just try to be a light in a dark, dark world. So peace and be a light. <laughs> and I will end this if I can. See ya. Bye, Nursey. Uh, let me see if I can. There we go.